I'm Jalila, Planetary Healer, and I'm going to share with you a belief change that is going to allow you to get rid of your negative head talk, critical mind chatter, and your uh, overthinking and always being very busy in the mind. Um, there's another positive effect of this one as well, which is that it will stop you from feeling like you have to work all the time. So this is actually what a lot of people conceive of as stress. It's, it's the thing that you always have to work. And you might think that that's coming at you because your job, your job is very busy or your boss has extra things that you have to do or the world is like that. But it's actually an inner pattern of your own expectations of yourself that you didn't know that you had that are doing that to you. So, so I'm a, an international healer. I've been doing this work for 22 years, mostly in Bali, which is a center in the world for healing and self-discovery. And I've created the reprogramming, which is my own methodology for transformation, rapid transformation. I've written five books about it. This is one of them, it's called The Reprogramming. And I've discovered how to transform many problems of humanity, many common problems that people have, including seven of the most common problems, which are a lack of self-love, feeling low self-esteem, depression, feeling unhappy, feeling creatively blocked, and some more, um, which you can read about on my website, which is jellila.com, J-E-L-I-L-A. Um, but this video is not about that, it's about changing a belief pattern, which is what makes the masculine thinking, doing part of you show up as a, as a kind of domineering maniac. He's not very cooperative and he is in fact egotistical, which is what we call this part when it behaves like that, but it doesn't have to behave like that. So when you do this process with me, the, that part of you will transform and it will become way more helpful. It will become much more open and helpful. And then it will show up like, oh, hello, can I help you? Rather than, what do you want to do that for? You know, instead of it being in that, that critical form, it will show up much more helpful. So let's get started. So let's invite all the parts of you to be here. So you may not know that there are actually eight different parts of you I believe everybody has, that I've discovered, and let's invite them. So the first one is the thinking doing one. So feel your feet on the ground, start to use an open mouth breath, in and out through the mouth. There's a lot of energy to shift on this one, which isn't surprising. So it's the first time I've done this belief on a planetary level. So let some energy move in the throat, let some energy move in the heart. Allow this sort of all over the place feeling of not knowing where to go. And don't worry, because your system will sort itself out during the process. And towards the end of the process, it will have all come back into a, a harmonious state. Let some energy move in the heart. There's a feeling of, of something quite like panic. So whoosh, allow the feeling, blow it out. It will release as you do that. Everybody thinks that blocking their feelings is the way to not feel them, but actually what that does is it makes you hold on to it and carry it around with you all the time. So you will actually be feeling it all the time if you do that. If you use this breath, it will come out of your secret negativity cupboard and out through your system and out. It will really be released. You won't feel it anymore. Let's some energy move in the heart. Gosh, there's a lot up with the masculine, isn't there? thinking doing one let some energy move in the throat so it's a gentle relaxation here let some energy move in the tummy so your energy will tend to start to bubble up through you it will come up and around and back down and it will carry on moving in that form and that is actually perfectly natural and everybody should or could be doing that because that's how our energy is supposed to move it's not all supposed to be stuck and repressed that's what brings our illness so let's invite the feeling one. So it might feel a bit funny having them here together because actually often people are very sequential in how you go into these different parts. You go into one, 
and you go into another, but rarely have them together, which is a pity because it's supposed to be a team. Let some energy move in the heart. And this is about how women have always been selfish and senseless. Okay, interesting planetary perception. Let some energy move with the heart. Really? That's a good one. And there's a the thought, I need to be selfish to survive. Right, so I, my sense is that's from the masculine. Thinking, doing part that everyone has, whether you're a man or a woman, you have that part. I'm not talking about men or women, I'm talking about the masculine within. So let's add a ball to the first hand that represents any parts of you that feel or believe, I have to be selfish to survive. So what's it going to create? It's going to create exactly what we've got in the world. Horrible, selfish, ugly developments that don't really survive. Don't cause the planet to survive, for example. Okay, let's invite the playful one. This is a creative part of you. For most people, it's very repressed because we've been told what to do since we were kids, or when we were kids, and repressed, really. And, and actually, that's been going on for years on the planet because of our slavery history. So obviously, slaves are repressed. You know, they're told what to do. They can't do what they want at all. So it's conditioned out of us, it has been conditioned out of us to even know what we want to do, or even that it's okay to do what we want. So we actually tend to need someone standing behind us saying, do this, do this, do this, because that's kind of normal, and that then tends to feel safe. Okay, then let's invite the wise one. So that might be if you do meditation or yoga, then that's that part. Let some energy move in the throat and let's invite the baby. So that's who you were as a baby. Still a really important part of you. It contains the picture of your nurturing, what you know about love. Um, and actually all the pictures that we have, they can be changed as well. We can reprogram them. So if you don't have a positive picture of, of what love is and you have trouble attracting somebody that is actually genuinely loving, then... Um, that's something that can be reprogrammed. You could actually change anything by reprogramming it within you. And then let's invite the embryo, which is also a very important part of the self. Surprisingly, it surprised me when I discovered it. So the embryo, that's who you were before. Well, just before you incarnated, before you came here into your body and were born. And sometimes it has recorded some impressions. And I find in some people who are extremely sad and they don't know why, or people that are very angry and need anger management, it's because their anger actually centers around their decision to come here and be here on the earth. And that helping resolve the thoughts around that and the issues around that and perceptions um, actually sorts that out and then that part can stop sort of splurging its sadness or anger out into your life which is great of course and then let's invite any parts that are not in the physical realm so if you have angels or guides that's them Let's invite any parts that feel like they don't belong here. So sometimes these are more advanced parts that come from other planets and stuff. And they're sometimes saying, oh, what am I doing here? You know. And any other parts. So 
so that you're all here now doing this. You hold out your hands, and in one hand, the same hand, let me just put that other ball in. Imagine a ball, add a ball, that represents any part or parts of you that feel or believe, I'm wrong, it's wrong, it must be wrong, there must be something wrong with me. So just put that in there, don't worry about it for now, it's not really true, it's just a thought. And add a ball that represents any parts of you that feel or believe, uh, I'm not good enough, it's not good enough, my creation is not good enough, it's not big enough, good enough to survive, to be appreciated, to be loved, to be cared for, to be tender, to be wanted, to be known, to be seen, to be addressed, to be heard, and anything else that needs to go in there, just have the intention that it just flies in. You don't need to know what, just let it go in. That has judged feeling or being like that as bad or wrong or is afraid of it or concerned about it. There's a new belief, which is my destiny can be safe with men. Hooray. I'm glad to hear it. In the other hand, allow a ball to come that represents parts of you that don't feel or believe like all that stuff. Just let it come into your hand. Just let your subconscious mind put it there. You don't need to know what's there. I don't want you to think about it, not at all. Just feel it. it. Might feel quite different from the energy in the other hand, that's okay. Bring your hands so they are facing. Your palms are facing, feel where the resistance begins. And rest there, use the open mouth breath. Gently in and out through the mouth, open mouth, in and out. Feel the feeling. It's a nice feeling. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Not theorize about it, not think about it. Can you come into your feminine and feel it? Here's a tip for getting into your feminine so you can feel. If it's okay for you to think about your mother, if that's all right, then think about your mother. Imagine what she might be feeling and then that will take you into your inner mother your feminine and tell you what you're feeling so just think about your mother imagine what she might be feeling and feel so it's a nice feeling it's like laughter you know so we might feel you know not so worried about everything not so worried about what we're doing So feel that feeling, see if you can feel it in your heart. Let your hands come together. Let some energy move in the tummy. There's an, a new thought which is, I'm worth it. Okay. So the reason why the masculine has been egotistical and a domineering maniac is because it always felt it wasn't big enough or good enough in comparison to the feminine. So the feminine is consciousness. So it's infinite energy okay so the masculine is finite because it's everything that's physical and real so the masculine looking towards the feminine is like gosh she can ask for anything she wants in a moment she can come up with any kind of amazing idea of what she wants me to create for her and manifest physically how am i ever going to keep up with her you know i'm afraid i just can't fulfill what she's asking for. So he's boxed himself off, he's built a wall. You might have noticed recently that building walls in between things is a kind of fashion. And, and that's because the masculine, that it's expressing itself. It is boxed off. It's almost like it's sitting in a cube, you know. And it's So it's pretending that the other parts of the self don't exist and that it's the only one, which is what you might be familiar with when you're in your thinking. You'll be like, oh yeah, I'm this and this is this, you know. But it's not. It's only one eighth of who you are, actually. So the masculine is afraid to connect with the feminine. In actual fact, the masculine, in order to be fulfilled, it needs to talk to her to find out what she wants. So that the masculine in you knows what to create. So then he's supposed to be like turning to her and going, Oh, 
can I do something for you? And then she's like, oh yeah, great. Thought you'd never ask, you know, been banging on this wall for years. Yeah, I'd like you to plant some flowers, not just have the lawn there, you know, whatever it is. You know. Take me out once a week or whatever it is, you know. So she tells him and suddenly he's like, oh, well, that isn't that hard. I can do that. Great. It's actually much easier than all the things he's been doing, like creating, you know, building a golf club or, you know, creating, being a CEO or having a big sports car or a giant um, motorbike or whatever it is he's been doing to try and make himself big enough to please her. She never wanted any of that. And that's why she's been grumpy for years. She just wants that. She just wants, you know, a few flowers in the garden to go out for dinner once a week. So now he knows that and it's clear and she says, well, I want to go to this restaurant at this time on Wednesday. And he's like, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, I can do that. So he goes and books it, just like that, simple. Comes back, says to her, I've done it, I've booked it. And she's like, oh, darling, I love you. That's so wonderful, thank you. That's exactly the restaurant I wanted and just the time. And I'm so excited that we can go there and have a lovely time. So he's like, hmm. Hooray! Finally, I'm a success. I fulfilled her. You know, and he says to her, it's my pleasure. You know, and then we know, you know something, something wonderful just happened there. So the masculine gets its true fulfillment from fulfilling the feminine when she appreciates him for what he's done. When he's actually done what she wants, then all of that can work. And then as a being, as a person, you will feel fulfilled. You will feel that your life has meaning. And if that isn't going on, and if you've just been doing what most people do, which is acquire more and more in their masculine to kind of support this feeling of not being enough and to try and be bigger, um, then at some point you will probably look around at everything and you'll kind of go, hmm, I've got all this stuff. But what's the point? You know, I've got this fantastic flat and a marvellous car, and I don't know, but hmm, I think I'll go travelling. So you'll go travelling, or you'll get a divorce, or you'll have an affair, or something, you know, just to try and change things. But in actual fact, what you're really looking for is the feminine in you, which is right in you, next, next door, you know, on the other side of the wall that I mentioned, she's there, you know, waiting, you know. So. When are you going to tell me? When are you going to ask me? When are you going to ask me what I want? You know, she's been banging on the wall for years. Will you listen to me? Crying and emoting. Will you listen? He's like, oh, sorry, I think I'll turn the stereo up. You know? So that's what's been going on for years. So we need this dialogue between the masculine and feminine inside. And if if that resonates with you, if that makes sense, then please go and have a look at my book, which is called The Gift of Harmony. And you can find it on Amazon and Kindle. It's called The Gift of Harmony by Jalila, J-E-L-Y-L-A. And in there you will find um, a, a section called Successful Relationship Transaction Leading to Happy Relationship Moments, which is what I've just been describing. And there's a, a whole chapter about it, explains it fully, uh, there's a meditation and there's also a recording of that meditation uh, which is on my healing music site which is jellila.bandcamp.com so you can also listen to that as a meditation and I talk you through the process and you practice it within yourself first from your feminine to your masculine your masculine to your feminine inside you and practice it a lot until it becomes easy because it's actually really simple it's not complicated at all it's very unfamiliar even to get the feminine in you to come up with something that she wants in most people that's really quite challenging you know she can come up with what she doesn't want quite easily she can say i hate it when you do this and i don't like it when you and i want it. she can do that but that isn't it. You have to come up with what you do want and then be very clear and then be able to communicate it 
and be able to give appreciation fully. There's a special way of doing the appreciation, which I just modelled for you. But you have to learn how to do that properly. So there's more to it than you might think, and it's really worthwhile. And when you do that in a relationship, it is delightful. You will love it. I promise you, you will love it. It absolutely lights the fire in your relationship in a really beautiful way. It's really, really nice. Because the feminine is getting what she needs and wants and connecting in the way she needs to and the masculine is providing in the way that he wants and getting the appreciation that he needs. And it's just very satisfying for both. So instead of going off having an affair, doing a sabbatical, or whatever that was, you know, you could, you could just read that and then create that in the relationship that you have now and be happy. That would be great. That would make me happy. <laughs> so let's manage to move in your heart. Feel your toes on the ground. And this bit is about not being supported by men. So if you're a man, it might be about how you haven't been supported by your father or by men in your family. It's not only men, it's also the masculine. That includes banks, companies, the legal system, for example. It actually means, men actually is a special word. It means physically. So as I was saying that the masculine is everything that's physical and real. So some words in the belief system are special and they actually have a really broad meaning. And when you believe something about one of those words, like men, it means it's also true in a bunch of other similar related areas, which is what makes beliefs that have these kinds of words in extremely powerful because they can be affecting your entire physical reality. See, so that's what I was saying in my other video when I was talking about how beliefs are like a tree structure and instead of working with the little twigs at the top with the little birds on, I like to come down the tree to the limbs and then come down to the trunk of the tree and help you change beliefs there in a, in a deep place like we're doing now because then it can ripple through and change all those other things. So a belief that's got men in it can also relate to money and it relates to work and it relates to job, it relates to boss, any physical person, men themselves and other symbolic things like your house and your mortgage and things like that. So they're very far reaching. So see if you can bring your hands all the way together. I seem to have managed to bring mine together. Was that because I finished processing it or was it because I was talking about my tree. <laughs> That's the energy moving the tummy. And there's a new belief which is if I have a choice I'm safe. So slaves, people that have been repressed, they never had a choice did they and that wasn't safe. So part of our conditioning is also to try and get rid of choice because we feel it's not safe. So how things relate in our mind, we, you might say, yeah, I didn't mean it about that. But your subconscious mind would be like, I don't care. You know, your subconscious mind is just like, you said that. So your subconscious mind will interpret what you say in all areas. If you say it and you mean it about this in your life, Subconscious mind doesn't work like that. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. It, it takes it literally and it applies it to everything it can apply it to, see. So that's how we sometimes end up getting in a muddle with our intentions, because we've actually asked for something in a way that is kind of ambiguous. We wanted it here, we definitely don't want it in these areas, but because it sounds the same to the universe, it will give it to you everywhere, you know, so this is how Sometimes we manifest what we don't want. And that's why, because I've noticed quite a lot of my clients doing that and having gaps in their understanding about that, um, that I've created 
a mastery of manifestation course so if you feel like uh, understanding a bit more about actually how to talk to the universe so that you can actually get it to do what you want and give you what you want not accidentally manifest what you don't want um, then you can have a look you can preview it at uh, it's uh, bit.ly bit dot ly forward slash dreams course all one word that's the energy moving the heart so I used to work in computing and design systems and work with optimizing systems and I implemented systems all over the world which was really great fun very creative and inspiring and so my work with people and with how the mind works and the subconscious is actually all based on that understanding of logic and I wouldn't really be able to do this if I hadn't done that you know so that's the moment you move in your heart And actually my, my original intention was not to go and work in computing, not at all. I am an artist at heart, I'm actually standing in my art studio, so maybe I'll show you. So you can see all around me, like that thing in the back over there is uh, my fairy village that I'm building at the moment. Uh, this is my healing space here and then over here you can see in the back some of my paintings and, and stuff so that's, that's my art studio but I felt a drive to change things which was really because of some stuff that happened in my family particularly with my father and that's why I'm standing in front of you now, changing the world, which is what this will do. So please do this process right till the end. You only need to do it once. It's a form of artificially induced experiential learning. The change is what you've got during the process as it goes into your system. It's like re-recording something. You don't have to do anything after you've finished it. Um, it will just come to you. It might take some time to integrate it so that your subconscious mind can apply what you've learned to all your memories and stuff. Um, please tell your friends about it. Ask them to do it as well. Uh, and notice what happens. Let me know. So usually what happens is that people notice a reduction or a complete uh, transformation in the busyness of the mind okay so your masculine part of you will stop being such a big bully and become more a team member and that can change the world and that's why I'm doing this with you so I have a beautiful daughter who's 19 and I care about the world and I, I want a beautiful world for her to put her beautiful creations into so please help me create that by doing this let me know how it is for you you can contact me via my website it's jellyla.com j-e-l-i-l-a.com and there's other stuff there that you can look at and, and benefit from as well. And if you want to ask me a question or send me a suggestion, then please do. You can email me. So there's a new belief, which is I am blessed by my circumstances and my suffering is safe. OK. 
okay so I'm blessed by my circumstances so then there isn't a problem around me in my world is there if I'm blessed by my circumstances so this is the new internal truth this is the new positive belief from this belief change that we've just done and my suffering is safe well if it's safe then there's probably not very much of it going on so it could be your suffering or the suffering of the world it's safe it also could mean that if you were suffering then it's not going to bring you irreparable harm And I'm safe from my suffering always. Now that's very good. So, safe from my suffering, it means making yourself suffer. Which is sometimes what we're doing when we keep thinking about things and worrying about things. So maybe you won't need to do that anymore. But again, you won't have to do anything different. You don't have to remember anything. This isn't an affirmation. You don't have to repeat it. You only have to do this whole process once. You do not need to do it again. Go and do another one if you want. That would be a better use of your time. Go and do the feminine empowerment belief if you didn't do that one yet. That's a really important one. Great. Well done. So make sure there's no gaps in between your hands. Keep them fully together. Well done. And then put your hands on your heart. That's yours to keep. That closes the process. And it says, I'm safe from suffering and I'm safe for all reality. So that it means that if there was any idea that you were harmful in any way to reality or that reality might be harmful to you, then that, that's changed. So that means that you can probably relax more not worry so much, not feel threatened. Just see what comes up for you. See how it is for you. So please rest. Sometimes the, the process can make you feel tired, sometimes very tired, because I mean, you've just processed a whole huge tree of information, because this is a deep tree trunk level belief. Okay, so please just be gentle with yourself. Rest, drink extra water. Keep using the open mouth breath for the rest of your life if possible so that your shackles can keep going around and finish off the process for you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for helping to create planetary peace and well-being for all of us. Please share this with all your friends. I really appreciate that. Thanks for listening. This is Jalila and my website is www.jalila.com.